So I'm using the Sigma lens as paired to the GH5, but you can use these lenses for any Macro Four Thirds camera that you own, Blackmagic, Olympus. These lenses have all autofocus, and the autofocus on these lenses works pretty good, even on the GH5. All glasses, all lenses that I used in these videos, I am going to put it down in the description so you can check them out if you want. This is the situation. I have this small room, five meters, five meters to four meters, and I'm sitting right here in the middle. The camera pointing at me, and now I want to get background blur here. So the first lens that I was looking for is this lens paired to the GH5 right now. I needed a white 16 millimeter lens shooting at f1.4 to have a little bit of a separation from the background to achieve a little bit of a background blur. All these lenses that I'm going to show you, I will compare to a kit lens that almost everybody has that came with the GH5 years ago. In my case, it is the 12 to 16 millimeter at 2.8. It's not a bad lens, you have all ranges. You have from 12 to 16 millimeters. Why I don't use just the kit lens at 16 millimeter? It's because it's a, it's a 2.8. And being this as a very small space, I couldn't achieve enough of a background blur. Everything was sharp. I can demonstrate you that now just by switching lenses. And you can notice how dark it is compared to the 1.4. So what I have to do now, I have to increase the ISO 200, 250, 320, 400, 500, 600, 800. Okay, you can notice I had to increase the ISO to 800. With this lens, I was shooting on 160 ISO. As you can notice right now, I don't have a background blur. My space is really small. This was the first reason. We switch back to the Sigma again. 640, 500, 400, 320, 200, 200 ISO. I think ISO 200 is pretty good. So you can see how much I had to increase the ISO. So this 16 millimeter will be a very good lens for low light situations. I have a little bit of a background blur. Uh, not too much, it's slightly, and that's because my space is really small. Before with the Leica lens, in this small room, everything was looking sharp. The background, everything was sharp. And this is the first reason I got this lens, to have a little bit of a separation from the background. And I think it looks pretty good. And even at f1.4, this lens is super, super sharp. And so when I first got this lens, I was making a lot of tests. So I apologize if I didn't make a video right away. I had to wait one month I had to sell my keyboard, my synthesizer to get these lenses because these are quite expensive. I think the Sigma 60 millimeter costs about 350 US dollars. And the 30 millimeter from Sigma is a little bit less, I think by 320 US dollar. I needed these two lenses, so I spent it overall about $700 for these lenses, but they are prime. I'm going to show you some tests that I did with the 60 millimeter. The first moment when I got the lens, I was a little bit disappointed because from this point of view, I didn't get so much background blur until I realized that I have to move closer to the camera to achieve a background blur. And so I did it. Then I tested it for vlogging. 16 millimeter is not ultra wide, but it's wide enough for me. Tested it in the car, it looked good. Can I use this lens for interviews? Yes. I wouldn't use a 16 millimeter for portraits though. If I would use the 16 millimeters for portraits, I would have to move very close to the camera and my face would look distorted. Did you ever wondering why most times you don't look the same in the camera like when you're watching in the mirror? It's because of the focal length. 
for portraits you need something like a 30 millimeters this lens is very good for portraits i didn't shoot many videos with the 30 millimeters now but i will in the future so keep it up stay tuned to this channel But someone called me, he wanted to do some photos of himself. So I told him, yes, I got new lenses, come here. We are going to try the 30 millimeters for portraits. So the model came here and we shoot a few photos that I'm going to show you now. Remember, the GH5 is not only a good mini cinema camera, it's also great for photos. But why did I buy the 30 millimeters if I already own from Panasonic the 25 millimeter? The Panasonic 25 millimeter at f1.7 was the first lens I bought. First, because it was cheap, it cost me only 150 bucks, and I could shoot with it in low light because of the aperture of 1.7. And being a 25 millimeter equal to a 50 millimeter full frame. It would be great for portraits or talking head like this, more close up, and it's very cheap. But <laughs> I thought I already own the 56 millimeter from Sigma. I just got the 16 millimeter. Why I don't get the trio and buy the 30 millimeter also? And I realized when I switched the lens and I compared these two lenses, Panasonic 25 millimeter 1.7 to the Sigma 30mm 1.4 and I have to say that 30mm just looks sharper and cleaner than this. Guys, I, I'm not trying to sell you anything here. I'm not making any money, but I'm just explaining you why it needed me so long to do a new video. Should we make a comparison? Let's switch to the 30mm. All right, we are shooting on the 30mm now and this is how it looks. The image is more compressed, so you can't see a lot of the background, but for portraits, it's great, isn't it? The good thing is the aperture remains the same, 1.4, shooting at ISO 200. So you see, for portraits, like the 25 millimeter, like I said, it's good. You get almost the same result. We are going to switch to the 25 millimeter, so you can see the difference, okay? And this is the 25 millimeter at f1.7. Compared to the 30 millimeters, you see it is a little bit, a tiny little bit darker. So I will increase the ISO to 250 or 300. Okay, I need a little bit more of ISO. So you can achieve nice portraits with that. Man, I shoot a lot with this lens. I love it for the price, the blurriness, the, even the background blur. It's great in low light. I shoot a lot in low light with this lens. It works, it works very good. And it gives you that separation that I was looking for in the first, the first time I got to this lens. It gives you that separation from the background. If you don't want to spend a lot of money for your next lens, I would suggest you the Panasonic 25 mm 1.7, for sure. Let's compare again the Panasonic 25 mm 1.7 with the kit lens like a 2.8. All right, I've switched to the kit lens and as you can notice, it is dark. <laughs> it's, it's much darker than the Panasonic 25 millimeter at f1.7. So again, I have to increase the ISO. 400, 500, 640, 800. At least I have to go to ISO 800, at least. But again, you have not a lot of a background blur. You can go with the GH5 up to ISO 1600 and the image will still look good. But I don't have the separation like with the Panasonic 25mm 1.7 and the Sigma 30mm f1.4. This Leica lens, is, it's not a bad lens. The Leica was the most expensive lens seven years ago. 1000 US dollar at the time, as of course now it's less. So what about the 56mm 1.4? First, I'm going to zoom in to 56 mm with the Leica, so I can show you a comparison. 40 mm, 50 mm, and 56 mm. Okay. Uh, 
This is now 56 millimeter. I like a lot 56 millimeter. I'm shooting on the Leica at ISO 800. What is the aperture here? So the aperture right now is 4.8 because when you zoom in, you get less aperture. But now this is where this lens shines. You get background blur. With this kit lens, you get background blur. A nice bokeh, but it's not very good in low light. For a good comparison, we are switching to the 56 mm. 640, 500, 400, 320, 250, I would say 200, 160. I'm in ISO 160, compared to the Leica was at ISO 800. And this is how the Sigma looks. It is still very sharp, good shallow depth of field. <laughs> the bokeh of these lights just looks amazing. How do you like the image? Completely in love with the Sigma. Look at these results. I will use this lens for close-ups like this, for talking heads video. It's almost a telephoto lens. You can use it for a lot of other stuff too. I don't want to be in your face any longer. So I switch back to the 60 millimeter. And we are back at 16 millimeter. The 56 millimeter from Sigma. I own this lens since a long time now. I shoot a lot with the 56 millimeter and you can tell why. It's almost a telephoto lens and the way it compresses images is just beautiful. I'm going to show you a few examples. Yeah, you can shoot portraits with it, you can shoot details with it, close-ups. What would I recommend you if you just have only the kit lens? It's great. Don't throw it away or don't sell it if you don't need. You saw the, the strength and the weaknesses of this lens. But if you want to make the next jump, without spending a lot of money. With the Panasonic 25mm, the f1.7 is a great option. Shooting in low light, get a better separation from the background, making good portraits, close-ups. So which of these lenses would I use if I have to travel and I can choose only one lens? Okay, of course, I will take all my lenses with me. But if I have to choose only one lens, I probably will go for the kit lens. It's a zoom lens, it goes from 12 mm to 60 mm and you can achieve a shallow depth of field with it. It's a great all-rounder. There's nothing wrong with the kit lens. I usually don't do reviews. I'm not sponsored. Nobody pays me to say this for these newer lenses. I even sold my keyboard synthesizer that I loved <laughs> because, because of these lenses. I don't regret it. All right, guys, we are at the end of this video. I'm very happy how this channel is growing. And if you want to support me, give a like to the video, comment below if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, share the video with some friends that are micro four thirds shooters. Again, I apologize that it took me so long to do a new video. 